No, my detection is super high. I'm gonna find out why he's mopping the asphalt. I'm not gonna find out why he's mopping the asphalt. Hey everybody, I'm Psychroclasm, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the demo for Clam Man 2. Um, if you don't remember, I played the demo for the original Clam Man and the full game, like early days of the channel, and I, I like the devs, I like what they make, and I'm excited to see what comes next. So new game. Now this one's supposed to be different. This is an entirely separate thing. We're not solving a mystery. We are, gosh, I don't know if I want to spoil it yet, but it's a, it's a completely different experience. You'll see. Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise Automated Employee Valuation Form JS34B. <laughs> well, he seems to be working on it, so I'm just gonna say, oh wow, they're all what? Okay, so why is my plant plaid? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> JS34 what now? That's what it says. Okay, what else does it say? Welcome to your evaluation employee number blank. Don't worry, this will be very brief. We're just taking a quick quarterly moment to reestablish your relationship with Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Oh, nice, more corporate speak. For this evaluation, we'll be asking you to initially state some information about yourself and then provide us with truthful and honest estimation of your skills and abilities. Oh my gosh, fun! What is your name? Clam Man. <laughs> what is your position at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise? Ooh, this, I don't know, I'm friends with the boss. Maybe this would be a good opportunity to think of something better. <laughs> oh, nope, can't do that. Okay, what, why? Well, you have to assess your skills, only we don't know your skills just yet. Oh, so that's what this is all about. Pretty much, we can go through it later. For now, just fill in your actual name and position. Okay. <laughs> Great job filling in those two fields. Your enthusiasm and ability to follow instructions are highly valued skills at Pri Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Speaking of skills, let's move on to the next part of the evaluation. Using numeric values, give us your own impression of your skills, and remember, please don't overestimate yourself. All right, let's do it. What would you say is your strongest skill? Okay, so this is basically the GOAT test from Fallout. Hmm. Let's say self-awareness. Perfect. The company appreciates employees <laughs> always keen and willing to apologize, especially when it isn't their fault. <laughs> I don't like this. I feel like I'm bragging. Please don't think I'm bragging. <laughs> what about your second highest skill? Uh, let's go with detection. Fantastic. Your observational skills are a valuable asset to this company. Almost as valuable as your ability to spend 10 hours a day doing menial, repetitive tasks. Uh, which skill could use some improvement? I don't know what aqua dynamics is. So that's probably going to be my lowest. Not to worry. Here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise, we don't mind if you think less. In fact, we encourage it. Finally, what is your greatest weakness? Aqua dynamics. While we regret, to <laughs> while we regret having learnt this... We would like you to congratulate your we would like to congratulate you for your ability to handle a pencil and this form. Please try to hand it in before you inevitably get to tell Oh, aqua dynamics, like acrobatics or just not being clumsy. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. And that's all your skills estimated. To confirm this, we need your signature at the bottom of the page. Sounds good. Well done. You've successfully managed to answer a number of questions about yourself. This information will be processed and checked for discrepancies by an AI far superior to yourself. <laughs> Flip the form. <laughs> there seems to be a number of simple instructions on the other side of the form. Uh, okay, basic tutorial. Interacting with people can be tricky, but as long as you understand the two different types of skill checks, you'll manage just fine. The two types are roll check and the static check. Uh, I actually know what both of those are. Thank you for your time and for all your hard work here at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. Static checks are basically your skill is high enough to have done this, and roll checks are kind of a random chance that are aided 
by the weight of your skills. Three knocks on your cubicle and a creeping smell of coffee. You already know who's coming to hey, see man. you. Is that the uh, the evaluation form? <laughs> this Almost one's voiced. Done. Pete, you know me. Yep, what's up? Not much. Not much. <clears throat> All right, hot take. The pickle is the most important part of the burger. Change my mind. The burger is the most important part of the burger. Yeah, you're crazy. You couldn't be more wrong. All right, then what is the most important component of the burger? The patty. Duh. You don't get it. We're talking about the most important component. The bun and the patty are given. Without them, there is no burger. Right. Bread and meat. That's heavy. That's rich. You need something to cut through it. Mayo won't do. Ketchup isn't enough. Veggies won't cut it. You need something with decent acidity. Something vinegary. Pickle power, dude. Pickle power. Anyway, that's not why I came to see you. Yeah, we work at a mayonnaise company. Shouldn't the official policy be that mayo is most important? He reconsiders for a second, but eventually returns to the same conclusion. As long as we make sure to state those opinions on our own and not reflective of the company, we should be fine. Uh, still, might want to keep quiet about this combo outside of work. You know, precautions. Anyway, that's not why I came to see you. Alright, what is it? Come on, I'll show you. Alright, lead the way. So Pete is a character from the first one, and he's now our boss. Uh, he was just a co-worker before. Echoes of light metallic taps and clanks climb their way up the elevator shaft. The low, peaceful rumbling of the bowels of Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise office building. The relaxed, bre <laughs> the relaxed breathing of a giant concrete behemoth. Sounds normal, like there's no cause for alarm. Peaceful. All's well in Snacky Bay, and for the first time in a while, Pete seems excited about something. Ooh. <laughs> I say, what are we looking at? Because there's no reason for this door to be open. Remember our old boss? This is his old private elevator. After he, uh, disappeared, there was no way of getting inside. He just sat there. Until today. He takes a step forward, carefully scanning the inside of the shaft. It was a short circuit or something because it just shot up through the roof this morning. <laughs> wait a minute, it shot up through the... Wait, why would a button do that? Yeah, okay. Beats me, dude. Someone just... <laughs> Maybe someone just hit it really hard. That's not how elevators work. Normal elevators, sure, but this was a private elevator. Might have had some secret tech installed. We don't know. I just wanted to use my skills. I didn't actually think that was worth asking. Pete, I'm telling you, they don't build elevators with eject buttons. Oh, an eject button! That's gotta be it! That's some spy movie shit, dude. Secret agents escaping hideouts with their customized elevators? Probably have rocket engines on the bottom. And machine guns! Ooh. That's a good question. Why would you put machine guns on the bottom? I don't know, if you're trying to escape, like... Ooh, that's a good question. Like, if you're trying to escape, like, by going down to the ground floor, yes, put them on the bottom. If you're trying to escape through the roof, put them on top. Both sides. I'm gonna say and flamethrowers. Most deaf, you'd need that for arctic missions. Mainly to fight the bad guys, but also to melt snow for drinking water. Gotta stay hydrated. Number one rule in survival, man. Secret agents need to think ahead of... <laughs> Secret agents need to think of that. Secret agents are smart. They definitely think of that. For sure. Okay, so let's talk about this. Smart thinking. That way they could take down the fighter jets tasting them. Oh, snap. They sent fighter jets. He nods deep in thought. They had to, man. This guy was a top-level secret operative. They're busting out all they got to stop them stealing the documents. Yeah, those secret documents are as important as they are secret. Can't let them fall into enemy hands. Man, it ain't easy being a spy. I think. <laughs> Good thing they have these rocket engine machine gun elevators to help them. Anyway, you said the elevator went through the roof? Pete shakes his head, trying to wrap his head around the situation. Straight through the roof. Like a bullet, man, it just burst through. Some private elevator, huh? You went up there? It's just a wreck. We managed to open it up, but there was nothing inside. I noticed something, though. He looks excited. Whatever it is, he could barely wait to tell you about it. What? You know how the regular elevator has ten buttons? This one had more? 
The ears are taken out of him. You were hoping he was hoping to surprise you. Tangible disappointment. Uh, yeah, this one had 11. How awesome is that? There's a secret floor. Isn't it just more likely that the other elevator didn't go to the boss's office? <laughs> Hang on, what was that about a quest? <laughs> All right, sometimes you come across a task or mission that you can choose to pursue. If you do that, it'll be added to your quest journal. You can then refer to your journal whenever to check that you have done check what you have done so far and what you need to do next. And what's the point of these quests, you call them? <laughs> quests, you call them? Sorry. Depends on the quest. Most of the time you'll learn something or get a deeper understanding of something. Or someone. That's the knowledge and ideas you can use in your repertoire. However, the shape they take is decided by the outcome of that particular quest and your choices. My repertoire? We'll get into that later. Just for now, remember the saying, quest good. Alright, thanks me. No problem, me. How awesome is that? There's a secret floor! Uh, that's awesome. Undeniably so. I know, finally, something interesting. Honestly, dude, the CEO deal kind of sucks. It's just work on work on work, and I'm just about ready to lose it. I needed this, man. My sanity needed this. Being CEO of a major company must be so rough for you. Senior sales representative is such a pleasure. You know what? I'm happy for you, man. It's hard to tell if he's more excited for the secret floor or your reaction. Either way, Pete's over the moon. You haven't seen him smile like this in a long time. So how do we get down there? Hesitation. He didn't think of that until now. I don't know. It's kind of high to jump. Ooh. Oh. Okay. So my detection is higher than my improv. I'm going to try it. Is it too high to jump? <laughs> Gaping void of death in elevators. Who knows? Why not test it out? <laughs> it's too high. Okay, use the improv. Oh, I failed. Oh, no. This isn't good. <laughs> if we swan dive into the shaft, our heads will absorb the blow and our bodies will be fine to go exploring. Uh, I don't know, man. Are we really that thick-headed? <laughs> Self-awareness high. We definitely are. Un <laughs> indubitably, undeniably so. Oh, okay. That said, I'm pretty sure it goes against company policy to dive headfirst into anything without proper paperwork. I don't think we have time for that. Fine, no swan dive. Okay, cool. I'm honestly kind of relieved. All right. Maybe we climb down. You think we could? <laughs> I don't like this. I've specced entirely wrong for this. Try to maintain your balance as you shake your head. We can find another way. It's fine. Oh, any ideas? There's people coming up to fix the elevator. We could wait for them and then ask them for help. All right, move on. Either we climb down now or wait until the service guy shows up later today. They'll probably have a ladder or a rope. Let's just climb down now. All right, dude, lead the way. Oh, I fucked that up so bad. <laughs> Are you sure about this, dude? Uh, sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear you. I'm too focused on oh, not sorry. dying. Are you sure about this, dude? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it'll be fine. I'm a spectacular climber, even though my aqua dynamics is terrible. Oh, man, I want to believe that. Oh, God. Me too. <laughs> Gaping void of death in elevators. The flickering lights certainly don't help the situation. It's hard enough just finding place to grip or a foothold. Ventilation and windy drafts compose a somber tune. And somewhere deep below you hear a me loud metallic clang akin to the opening of a giant maw. This is it. Embrace the fall. Sink into darkness. <laughs> this is Master Shaft will be your doom. Oh, I'm understanding now. This is... The, the character of the gaping void of death in elevators is speaking to me. Did you hear that? What was that noise? I think the elevator shaft is making dick jokes. Gross, tell it to stop. <laughs> Keep going. Stop it, shaft. Don't be so stiff. The road ahead is long and hard. You manage to descend a fair distance until you reach the crux of the climb, about two meters of flat surface walls with nothing to grip. Beyond that, you spy a construction beam right underneath you. To your right dangles a cable, seemingly unattached, swinging freely in the draft. It's unclear how far you are from the bottom. Maybe you could just drop? Uh, 
why is my Aqua Dynamics 14 and 30? Uh, this is bad. <laughs> please, please, please. Mm. 18 out of 78. Awesome. You try to push yourself from the ledge, but your hands slip and you tumble down the shaft. The ground looks like it's eager to make your acquaintance. Dude, what are you... Before you have time to think of a response, your free fall comes to an end. You hit the bottom. It's painful, but you'll be walking away from this with nothing worse than a limp and a sharp pain in your ass. <laughs> I'm okay! Oh, cool. I guess I'm going next. Uh, don't drop. It hurt a lot. Where am I dropping? Oh, sh He's going to fall on top of you. <sighs> I'm going to try and catch him. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is going great for me. As you position yourself directly underneath Pete, you do some quick math. The gravity, Pete's body weight, your upper body strength. It's simple math, and this was a bad move. There's an almost cartoonishly loud thud as he crashes down on top of you. A loud thud is followed by a moment of silence, only broken by Pete's groaning. That hurt as much as your first fall. You okay? I feel okay. Then again, I don't know how a broken bone or internal bleeding feels, so I can't be sure. He dusts himself off and looks around. Alright, what now? In front of the two of you, an exit leads out of the shaft, a small lobby-like space with a fancy door to your left and a stairway up to your right. Is this not the lobby? Like, the actual lobby? The door's unlocked and smoothly swings open. You walk in. Wait. What? Whoa! What the... What is all this? The comedy club's at the basement of the Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise Company? This is Company? the coolest basement I've ever seen. And I used to live in a basement. Smoky carpet, the dim lighting, the inescapable feeling that you've disturbed the sanctity of this place by being here outside of opening hours? This is a bar. Has to be. Yeah, this is a very confusing basement. I know, right? If I didn't know any better, I'd say this place was a bar. It's not a bar, it's a club. I'm Tilda. I'm the bartender. It's a club! Of course! I was thinking it was a bar, but it's a club. <laughs> Is he being sarcastic? Doesn't look like it, Chief. Oh, God. Hey, wait, didn't you used to work at the Blue Oyster Club? She stops and then looks up at you with horror. Oh, God, I knew I recognized you. Give me one good reason not to throw you out right now. Uh, I set a fire at the Blue Oyster Club last time, I believe. What? What did I do? R remind me what happened? Chowder Boy here set fire to a glass of industrial strength alcohol, rocks, parsley, and mayonnaise inside the club while people were inside. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was it. Do you have any idea how hard it was to get that smell out? <laughs> Not very. If that wasn't enough, word got out that the Blue Oyster Club was the smelliest place in Sanaki Bay. Crowd stopped showing up. Ted stopped showing up. Eventually, I stopped showing up as well. So, uh, what'd you do between then and now? The National Health Department contacted me and offered me to work as a consultant. Spent a few years as a toxicologist. A what? An expert on poison. Turns out it's not that different from being a mixologist. A what? Bartender. Eventually I missed the job though, so I quit and these guys hired me. Turns out that I'm just so sociable and sweet that I can stay that I can't stay away from working hospitality. I'm just that much of a people pleaser. A what? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh god. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here, so let's just zoom past it to the point where we're friends again. Glares, lots and lots of glares, glaring upon glaring, then she can then she collects herself and takes a deep breath. Listen, we can put it behind us, but we're not friends. Remember that. How long have you been in the basement? Since this morning, I sleep at home. I, I mean the bar, the club. How long has it been here? Uh, about three months, I think. I started working here two months back after I left my last gig. All right, what kind of club is this exactly? The funny kind. I know what kind it is. The basement kind. No, the comedy kind. Of course. It's a comedy club. That's what they tell me anyway. 
Sorry, I just started listening to the music and I heard yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pete's eyes light up. He gusta this mucho. A comedy club in the basement of my very own company? <laughs> Self-awareness high-ish. Am I funny? Sure, you're funny. About 88% of people agree. <laughs> then again, that's like polling 10 people. It's not like a lot of people know you. You're kind of a nobody. Ooh, how come nobody knew about this? Because we haven't opened yet. Like I said, this place has been here for a couple of months. We barely had time to get things in working condition. She looks over at the bar for a second. Well, I say working order. Pete squints, his tone ever so slightly tinted with a hint of authority. How come we didn't know, though? This is our building. We own it. Look at Fishboy here, so confident all of a sudden. She looks at Pete, who quickly becomes void of any trace of authority. You don't own the basement, city law. Anything beneath the ground floor can be rented out without the consent of the post surface owner. That can't be right! Yeah, detection. In the city, all income goes directly to the city. Not sure to exactly, but... What the fuck? But the city doesn't own Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise, and I'm pretty sure we own the building. Yeah, it's the that's the way the law works. I know it's weird. They passed it a few years ago, and all we know is how corrupt the last mayor was. <laughs> oh, and we all know how corrupt the last mayor was. The conversation goes silent, and all three of you know very well that's true. Pete looks uncomfortable. She clears her throat, breaking the silence. Anyway, maybe something good can come of it. There's some hope in her voice, which seems incredibly off-brand. Maybe this whole culture and comedy thing is more appealing to her than she's willing to admit. Anyway, city laws say they can rent it out however they please, and that's that. You better believe it, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Okay. Uh, I understand post-surface, but let's, uh, let's just move on. You said they, so this isn't your club? Nope, just take care of the bar. So who owns it? They're at one of the tables. Talk to them instead, not me. She points towards the empty tables and chairs. From one of the corners, you hear voices in conversation. Gonna talk to the owner. See you later, Tilda. Mm-hmm. You go on ahead, man. I'm gonna take this place in. Comedy club in the basement of my own company. Sure, I'll be right back. He doesn't respond. He's overcome with awe, smiling like a kid. I guess, I guess she didn't have to point very far. Also, this is not a corner in the back of the club. Hello, Cthulhu. Clayton. The three owners seem to be deep in thought. The large guy and the short girl either don't notice you or pay you any mind. It's hard to tell. The guy on your left, though, sees you approach and brightens up Whoa. a little. Whoa. Uh, fresh face. Hey, man. How's it going? How did you get in here? Didn't we lock the door? Al, didn't you lock the door? Yeah, I locked the door. Look, sorry, man. We're not open. Guys, come on. We were just talking about this. Ah, about random dudes breaking in and strolling up to us like they're expecting casual conversation. Uh-huh. What conversation were you having? Clay, I get what you're saying. This... this isn't it. Isn't what? People? We need people. Even if it's just one people. I mean, person. Uh, hi, I'm Clam Man. I mean, yeah. Checks out. Mystery solved. I didn't mean uh, to interrupt worry, anything. Man. Tensions are a little high. We're just dealing with something. Ugh, that's an understatement. I'm Al. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I'm Edna. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the Poseidon. This is our club. Ah, uh, boy. Love what you've done with the nice, place. dude. I mean, we haven't done much. Uh, it's a start. Most of the interior is done. Bar's done, too. All we need now is to lure a crowd into the basement. I know, it sounds like a lot of fun. So who are you guys? We're, uh, comedians. Uh, ooh, boy. Uh, I actually like Clayton. Clayton was the... Clayton is probably going to be my favorite, I think. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Whoa, real-life comedians. Shocking, right? We, out, we exist outside of Netpick specials. Me and, Ed were, me and Edna were doing the same venues and got to know each other. Al here just got back into doing live stuff. Got tired of corporate gigs and open mics and bars. Figured it was the time Snacky Bay got a real club. 
club for com a club for comedians run by comedians. That sounds awesome. When are you guys opening? The owners share a defeated sigh. We're supposed to open tonight. So in about nine hours? I sense a butt. Uh, we sense a lack of butts in seats. Ha! <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, we sort of neglected doing any marketing. Me and my friend didn't even know you were here, and we work in the same building. No shit! I was contemplating something and eventually asked you, You're not doing anything right now, are you? I never do anything. Besides break-ins. Oh, I see what you're saying. Do you think you could help us out? Help with what? Getting the word out. Letting people know we're opening, that we exist. I mean, you came across our secret little underground illegal lair. Hey, uh, hey, hey. What do you mean illegal? Everything under the ground can be rented out aside from the post surface, whatever the heck. You're going to tell someone no matter what, right? <laughs> like the police? Sure, chances are they'll laugh at you, though. Tell everyone else so they can come laugh at us instead. Fine, I'll get the word out. Sweet, thanks, man. That's a huge load off our shoulders. Coincidentally, you feel like a huge load has been placed on you. Weird, huh? Well, that's one problem solved. On to the next, I guess. We're one act short of a show. Everyone we know is booked. Right now, it's just the three of us. Clayton nods and chuckles. You don't happen to do stand-up, do you? Oh, <laughs> this is going to go badly. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, these guys are comedy nerds. Hit them with some classic deadpan. My boss is hard to convince, so when I told him I needed the day off because I hurt my foot, I really had to nail it. That's... <laughs> Yay, plus one to Al. That's so dry. I like it. What a dad joke. The father of all jokes. <laughs> Shut up. It's not bad. It's definitely a start. If you're up for it, we need another comic from the opening. There's a first time for everything. Sure. What's the worst that could happen? A lynch mob. They're a real riot. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> That's bad timing. Uh, great. We got a full show. Yay. <laughs> Just kidding. Appreciate it, my dude. Yeah, don't worry. We're just fucking around. You'll do fine. All right, here's the plan. We get the place ready for tonight. Tilda gets the bar in top shape, and you get in touch with the newspaper or something to get the word out. How does that sound? But what about me? What about my routine? Don't worry about it. Just get out there. As long as you observe the world around you and talk to people, you'll think of something to joke about. How many jokes do I need? You don't have to go on for long. Just a few minutes. Something like three good bits should be enough. Three jokes. Got it. Bits. We call them bits. Uh, okay, this sounds easy enough. I can totally do this. Awesome. All right, we'll get everything set up here. Come back when we have some jo when you have some jokes and we'll help you workshop. Don't stress too much about it, all right? Anything can be made funny. Good luck, my dude. Also, let your friend know before you go. I'm worried he's going to stand there forever if you don't. Pizza silent and awestruck as you left him. I uh, got some news for you, buddy. He doesn't take his eyes off the sea of chairs and tables. Oh yeah, what's up? I'm gonna do stand-up. His jaw hits the floor. No way. No way. My best friend is gonna be a comedian. Dude, that's awesome. I'm kinda nervous. Oh dude, don't worry. You'll do great. I'm sure of it. What are you gonna joke about? Office work? That whole conspiracy ordeal from a few years ago? Oh, I don't think it was a conspiracy. Well, I... Th I it's so weird, because I think of conspiracies as conspiracy theories, not actual conspiracies, but there really was a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, that sounds like an idea. <laughs> well, dude, whatever it is, you're gonna kill it! Take as much time off from work as you want, dude. I mean it. I guess we should get going. Are you done here? Uh, sure, let's go. Mystery solved, huh? It's a comedy club. In the basement of my own company. How awesome is that? <laughs> Fist bump. Your knuckles crack as you and Pete swing your closed fists against each other. He basically punched your hand. Obviously, he's still very excited. Oh, damn. Sorry, dude. Did that hurt? Not at all, my bro. He closes his fists again. All right. All right. Honestly, the circumstances demand more than one bump. Here it comes. Accept your fate. <laughs> crack. Yeah, bro fist. One more. He closes his fist again. All right, all right. On the, okay, here we go. How long can we do this? Okay. I'm going to keep going. Now 
There has to be an end to this. There may not have to be an end to this. Okay. Okay, whoa there, slow down. No situation demands more than one fist bump, let alone many. Oh, sorry, I'm just excited is all. <laughs> You're just supposed to... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't want to call him on it, honestly. I love the crack fist. Oh, uh, boy. It's cool, man. Just don't punch my fist. Gotcha. Sorry. I feel bad now. You want to give him a reassuring fist bump to show him that you're okay? Yes! <laughs> you only have to lift your, <laughs> lift your fist ever so slightly for Pete to notice. Ah, you were only joking. Here it comes. <laughs> Loud crack this time as your hands clash against each other. Okay, putting a stop to this. Need that hand. So what now? He stops for a second to let out a short sigh. I gotta get back to work, man. You take the day off, though. You gotta work on your routine. You know what? Take as many days off as you like. I cannot wait to see you up on stage cracking jokes. Thanks, dude. Dude, of course. I gotta run. I'll see you later, alright? See ya, best friend. Wide grin. Off he goes. Why are all the plants plaid? And by plants, I mean coral. The street is empty, which in turn makes it easy to notice the little things. And the most dominant little thing right now is the man across the street outside the cafe. Looks like he wants to talk to you. Your call, chief. That guy. Dirt and dust are gathering in the lanky mackerel's mop. It's unclear whether or not it's intentional. Hey, you. You notice an embroidered na name on his apron. Mac. I saw you leaving across the street. You in with those people? Ooh. The gang at... Ooh, boy. Those people. He lifts the mop off the asphalt and pokes at the air towards the other side of the street. The comics. Oh, yeah, I am. He grunts. His mopping intensifies to the degree that the handle almost snaps. Why'd you ask about the Poseidon? Because I know that kind of business, and I know it's bad business. It'll be gone within a week, trust me. The club will be gone? Why? You'll see. Why are you mopping the asphalt? Because we're closed, and I'm not going to pay someone to do something I can handle by myself anyway. No, why are you mopping the asphalt? Because it has to be done. But why? He stops, exhales, and grits his teeth at you. Do you want to mop the asphalt? No, I don't. I don't see why anyone would mop the asphalt in the first place. Clearly, you've never worked in hospitality. I still don't get it. I don't care. <laughs> 35. No, my detection is super high. I'm going to find out why he's mopping the asphalt. I'm not going to find out why he's mopping the asphalt. <laughs> he wants to mop it. You want to mop the asphalt? He looks at you, just says nothing, just keeps mopping. Is that why you do it? Nothing. I must know. Tell me. Zilch, not a nothing. Curse the heavens. <laughs> the heavens say, oh yeah, up yours, buddy. Fine, I don't even know why I care. Oh, God. Uh, whatever you say. See ya. Okay. That was weird. Let's just walk into and across the street. Ooh. Ads and posters for just about everything and nothing. Okay, that one's not special. I thought I'd be able to take something. Okay, we're gonna head this way then. Uh, enter, whoa, no, in, nose show. Okay, uh, let's enter the alley. Hey, it's Bill. Bill's, er, Bill is, <laughs> Bill, everyone's favorite homeless conspiracy theorist, and one of your oldest friends is Snacky Bay. You can't tell what he's reading, but he's tearing through whatever book it is. His eyes don't leave the page as he acknowledges you. Just a second. His reading intensifies as he tears through current pages in a matter of seconds. There, sorry, I was in the middle of a really good part. What's up? Inspect the sign, because I've been curious about this. In large, bold letters, the words, The duck is nigh. A warning, but a hopeful one. Bill notices you looking at it. You want it? So, I guess are you not a conspiracy nut anymore? Because the duck became... The duck, the duck was nigh, and then 
we passed the duck being nigh in the last game. So you're not a conspiracy theorist anymore? Again, the preferred term is conspiracy for a conspiracy nut is either drama queen or conspiracy enthusiast. And to answer your question, not really. After I stopped raising awareness about the duck, I picked up new hobbies. He raises his book. Turns out that reading and educating yourself is kind of productive. <laughs> It's kind of counterproductive conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, conspiracy theories are fun, though. He grins. Hell yeah, they are. But there's a difference between having fun with them and believing them. And there's always someone stupid enough to believe. So what have you been reading? All sorts of things. The classics, physics, philosophy. Good stuff, bad stuff. Keeping an open mind. You were more fun when you were crazy. Probably. I'm happier now, though. That is good. That it is, my man. Anyway, want to talk about something else. I forget, what was the whole duck thing about? The duck? You don't remember? The duck of truth is the Snacky Bay's very own vigilante superhero. Crime fighting and a uh, not today who knows kung fu and makes everyone in his vicinity super honest. We didn't know much about him until a few years ago when he foiled a plan to corrupt mayor and put into action. You should know you were there. All right. And after that, the story spread. People became aware of the D.O.T. He stopped, becoming a, he stopped being a myth and started being an actual person. No more use for that thing. It's a post nigh sign. Exactly! Alright, let's talk about something else. Such as... Uh... Good book! Really good book. He turns the front towards you so you can read it. It says, Temporality Just a Prawn in Time, written by Magnus Adam. He turns the cover towards himself, studying it as he continues. It's a strange, it's a strange mix of fiction, autobiography, and philosophy. That is a strange mix. But it works surprisingly well, I might add. It's a story about time travel, essentially. The main character is quite obviously a representation of the, wider, the writer in his own work. Quite obviously. Anyway, it's not the story itself that's the most interesting part. It's the way the book deals with time. What is time to you? Woo. Time is stupid, and I don't respect it. Same as everyone else, I guess. A series of events? So time is linear. Yes and no. He smirks. How diplomatic. Indulge me. If you had to pick one, which would it be? Yes or no? Hmm. I don't know. Even de even deviations would take place in a linear fashion, so I think I'd have to say yes. Why? What do you mean, why? There's the past and there's the present. <laughs> because I said so. Hard to argue with that, he chuckles, so let's say time is the transition of past to present. Does that mean time is a linear flow from point A to point B, one dimensional? And if so, does it have a start and an end? If so, wait, that'd be two dimensional. If so, does it have a start and an end? And if so, where are those end points? Before you have time to respond, he lets out a laugh. Ah, they're just questions, brain teasers without answers. That's essentially what the book is about, relati relativity and topology of time. How we represent time and how we perceive time, as well as how that shapes our view of the concept. You're saying you're training to become a time wizard. A pause and then a nod. How do you know about the time wizards? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to have derailed the entire conversation. Was there something you wanted to talk about? Uh, I'll leave you to your reading. Thanks, talk to you later. He wets his finger and turns another page. Oh, God. So... Oh... Wooly is real. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a mammoth, and it's still here, even after you rub your eyes and pinch your arm. It stands frozen at the end of the alleys, of guarding an entrance to some secret forgotten valley. One of the few things grounding fuzzy monstrosity in reality is its name tag, just barely visible underneath the fur, and it reads in bold, capitalized letters, Wooly. Is it alive? It is very still, underwater, and in an alleyway. What do you think? So it's dead. It is almost certainly dead. Almost? Well, nothing is 100% certain. Not even the deathness of said mammoth. That's not a word. It's not a word. Death, deadness, deathality, deathability, defecation, whatever. Shut up. So, Wooly the Mammoth. The Wooly Mammoth. Why is there a mammoth here? Who knows? You could just try asking it or just try to figure it out. Deduce it, Sherlock. I succeeded. Look at the feet. The pads are scratched post-mortem, not by claws or natural terrain. The even damage and almost sawtooth-like lacerations indicate the contact with some form of graded metal. 
potentially that of a lightweight loading bay. The fur around the legs has grip marks as well. Hairs are still pressed down, which suggests they were at some point gripped tightly. The positioning, however, suggests the fulcrum intended to turn the mammoth rather than lift it. It must have been maneuvered on and off level platforms by hand. Since the hair was never combed back up, it stands to reason that display was no concern for whoever moved it here. It's been stowed away to be forgotten. Whoever brought it here didn't care about it. It was thrown away. Big Mammoth came on forklift. Bingo. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> why is that a quest? Now the question is, why is it here? Who brought it here? I guess we'll find out. How exciting. Laters, Mammoth. <laughs> no response. Okay, let me see. Elephant in the room. Okay, this is... Okay, I know about this. You won't be solving this anytime soon, but keep your eyes open. So this is a thing that is not solvable in the demo. And I love that they told me that because I'm one of those people who will try so hard to solve a quest when it's really like only progresses halfway through the game, like hours away. It's, I don't know, that that has always frustrated me and I'm just grateful that I've gotten the opportunity to know in advance that I cannot solve it. All right, let's go looking for some jokes. It's Nat! Upon closer inspection, maybe not... Oh, dangerous teens, sorry. Upon closer inspections, maybe not all teens are dangerous. These might be okay, but you... No, stay on guard. They might try to make fun of you. The dice rattle and clack against the concrete as the faded faces tumble up. Right now, it seems fate has settled on a three and four. Ha! Seven! This is the comeback, baby! Oh, jeez. Oh, no. My luck is gonna turn, isn't it? It's turning right now. I can see the backside of my luck. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, what's up, Druk? How come you're not at work? Got fired again? Uh... No, I didn't get fired, Natalia. Sure you didn't. So, what are you going to do next? I'm gonna be a stand-up comedian. Wait, seriously? That's kinda cool. Why, though? I'd ask if that was a joke, but that'd be weirdly contradictory. Uh... Oh, boy. I mean, like, I'm gonna have to go back to my job eventually, right? I kind of got strong-armed into it. That does sound like you. No will of his own? Shut it. You don't get to make fun of Clammy. Oh, Clammy. That's my job. The starfish just kind of listens, but in a really awkward way. How have you been, Nat? Same old, I guess. Bored most of the time. Guess your stand-up career might be the beginning of the end of that, huh? They let minors into wherever you're performing, right? Uh, Okay. <laughs> How's Ivan? How's your dad? He's all good. We're renovating the second block next week. He's always telling me I'm running things when I'll be running things when he's too old. Not really feeling the landlord business. What about landlady? You better have better jokes for your show, Clammy. Shouldn't you be in school? Shouldn't you be at work or doing something productive? I'm doing the same as you, man. Hanging out, figuring stuff out. Never mind. I wanted to ask you something else. Uh huh. How do I make people laugh, Nat? You don't! People will laugh at whatever they want to laugh at. It doesn't matter how funny a joke is. The only thing that matters is whether or not people want to laugh at it. Holy shit! That's deep! <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Church. What the fuck does that even mean, Olev? I'm not really sure if that helps, Nat. I'm not sure it's supposed to either. Just don't worry so much. If I guess you're... Doing stand-up at a club for stand-up, people will be there hoping to enjoy themselves. Maybe. I gotta go do important adult stuff. See you later. Mm-hmm, sure you do. Talk to you later, Clammy. That's so funny. Like, it's, it's weird that it's been long enough for Natalia to grow up. Because, like, I remember in the original game... Hang on, I've got it around here somewhere. Okay, so I picked this up, like, forever ago, because Nat was just this adorable, tiny little baby girl in the first game. And I don't know, it just seemed like I could turn this into an Italia plushie. Like, I just take off the head and reorient it so it's, like, in a human position. It's a long story. 
you just have to go look at the original model, but it's so weird to see her grown up. Okay, so I've been following the game on Twitter, and I know that this one gives me an opportunity to lie to a child, and this one is something else entirely. Alright, I'm gonna go lie to a child. I voted for this. There was a poll on Twitter to, to, to like, pick a quest that we wanted to see in the demo, and I picked lie to a child. Two curious little eyeballs are following you, making your way up and down the street. When you stop and turn towards her, the little window the girl in the window bobs down for a second, then pops up again with a big smile. Mm-hmm. That that's a name. Hi. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Hi, my name is Nee. <laughs> that's <laughs> Do you have a nickname? She leans over the windowsill to whisper. My dad calls me Niha, but mom says I should use my full name. You can say Niha too, even though you're not my dad. Sure thing, Niha. What's your favorite kind of food? Uh. Pfft. Is that what clams do? I like pizza. I like that too. I like butter chicken too, and I like the way the restaurant makes it. Suddenly, she's distracted by something inside the apartment. All you hear are faint, tinny noises of people speaking. Probably a TV. Niha remains frozen for a second, zoned out with a blank expression. Eventually, she turns back to you, pressing her lower face against the windowsill. What you doing? I ask myself that every day, Niha. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should you be talking to a child like that? Like, like what? You know, like using the self-deprecating tone sounds sad. Kids notice stuff like that. Shouldn't you be... Should you be that real with them? I mean, what if it's just the way I feel inside? I mean, you could consider if this is the right outlet for it. I'll talk to children any way I want. Alright, Chief, just pointing things out. Now let's give her a more interesting answer. I'm talking to you, silly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it was a stupid question. Oh, God. Uh, sure, Niha, it's all right now. Oh no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> My failure rate is like 60% right now. Oh no, it was a pretty dumb question, but live and learn. Be better next time. <laughs> Niha looks even sadder now. She doesn't even look at you. <laughs> yes, sir. I feel awful. What was your first time? To is this your first time being rude to children? It is? How come you're so good at it? That's all right, Niha. Niha nods again, but she's looking a little less guilty now. Wow, great job. Sounds like Niha's run out of things to ask you. She turns towards the sound coming from inside the apartment again, but she's not as mesmerized this time. You notice that between glances over the street, the TV, and the apartment, she keeps looking down at something between her and the window. What she got there, Niha? She looks down and turns her shoulders from side to side. It's a letter. Did you write the letter, Niha? She nods. Who's it for? I wrote it for my dad. He lives at a fancy house, but it's really far away, and I can't go out very far. Oh, boy. <clears throat> that get, mm, Sad stuff. Uh, where exactly does your dad live? It's really far away, but I have the address on the letter so the postman can get it to him. You can't go out. How come? I get, I get sick really easy. That's why I stay inside. God damn, Niha! Oh, he wanted... Okay, I see. They wanted to make it hard to lie to the child. Aren't you going to put it in the mail? She ducks down below the window again. I can't. I can't go outside. I'm not allowed to. Can't your mom mail it for you? She's quiet for a moment and then whispers back, No! Either she doesn't want to show her mom the letter or her mom won't post the letter. Poor Niha. I can put the letter in the mail. Her jaw drops and her shoulders tense up. Really? Could you do that? Thank you, sir. She lifts the letter over the windowsill and hands it to you. There's a mailbox across the street behind you, sir. You got it, Niha. I'll be back in a moment. She squeals with joy. Thank you. You step in front of the mailbox and the letter hatch opens. You hear coughing as some dirt and dust settles. Uh. Uh, no, this mailbox is closed today. Have a nice day. Uh, but... Hang on, is... That looks a lot like Niha. Is that her dad? Never mind. 
Literally a child could see this. You're not closed at all. You're a dude. I swear I'm a mailbox, not a dude. I've seen lots of dudes in mailboxes in my day, and I'm 72% sure that you are, in fact, a dude. The man in the box groans. Ugh, you're right. I'm sorry. I am a dude, not a mailbox. My name is Dev. I'm Niha's father. Yay! Listen, I saw you talking to Niha. That's her letter, isn't it? It is. It's for you. Mother wouldn't let her mail it, right? Yeah. I knew it. I can't blame her, but even so, look, I can't let you send that letter. Bring it back to her, all right? Tell her the post's closed or something. It's for you, though. Please, man, I'm begging you. Just give her back the letter and walk away. I'm going to need an explanation. It's hard to tell through the mailbox, but it looks like he's rubbing his temples. Look, you're not an idiot. I'm sure you'd understand what's going on here. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh... I don't know what the sentence means, charade you are. I don't know what that sentence means. But I don't think that's helpful either way. Let me guess, you don't want the letter to be mailed because something's wrong with the address. Bingo. Me and Nia's mother obviously don't live together anymore. We're not together in any shape or form. Nia's mom doesn't really like me that much. There's some baggage there. Long story short, I may or may not have given them a fake address and told them I work at a really prestigious job. The address on the letter doesn't exist. There, that's the whole story. Now will you please return it to her? So you're lying to your daughter and your ex-wife to prove you're not a loser? I get the irony. No need to spell it out. Is that enough? What more do I need to say? Again, why can't you just take the letter? I can't be here all the time, man. Sure, I get it now, but what if she sends another one and I don't intercept it? Oh! Okay, that makes sense. So you'd rather just never respond than now and then? You'd never... Ugh. You'd rather just never respond? Look, it's just temporary. When I've sorted things out, I'll write her a letter with the real address. What kind of rinky-dink logic is this? It's just how things are. It's difficult to explain. I'm not good at it. I accept that. <sighs> okay, tell me about Niha's mother. Her name is Janya. She was always the provider in the family. Had a job when I didn't. You were stay-at-home dad? Yeah, pretty much. I'd like to think I was good at it, but, you know, at any rate, I'm aware that I'm not a great away-from-home dad. <sighs> He looks around gesturing as well as he can. This is all temporary. Right as he finishes the sentence, a salvo of jellyfish dropping splats on top of the box. You don't have a job? I don't. Not right now. I just don't want them to know that. I'll catch up and get back up on my feet and land a great job. It's just a delayed truth. What does Janya do? She works for the government. She's good at what she does, and her hours reflect that. It's trickier now that I'm not around. Niha spends a lot more time alone, and she shouldn't. Anyway, enough about her. Oh, what else do you need me to say? Are you looking for a job? Yeah, getting back to my roots. I designed bike racks. Uh, pardon me? I designed bike racks. I'm really good at it. I did my master's in technical engineering, specializing in bike racks. And... Oh, specializing in bikes and racks. And then... I drew some really nice racks. Fantastico. Oh, God. There's got to be something else I can... There's got to be something else. Just give her... Just give her your current address, no matter how embarrassing it is. I can't, man. It's just too... Dev takes a moment to piece together whatever logic led him to the situation. He isn't enjoying it. Wait for him. It's not just her and her mom, too. And honestly, it's me as well. I don't expect you to understand. It's odd, I know. Okay, I still don't get it. All right, before you say anything, hear me out. I get that you don't want to take the letter back, and I don't want to admit it, but it's probably better like that. Besides, I wouldn't know how to explain that anyway, so here's an idea. Give her this one. He holds up a slip of paper with text on it. This is the address to a P.O. box I have. She gets a way to reach me, and I don't have to embarrass myself by letting her and Janya know where I'm staying right now. That sound good to you? Why the hell didn't you do this before? God. Yeah, the P.O. box makes sense. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for understanding. 
Dev gives you the address of the P.O. box. I'll make it up to her. I promise. Why didn't we just start with that? Hello, sir. Did you manage to post my letter yet? There's... Ooh, boy. There's a slight problem with your letter, Niha. Oh, no. Did you drop it? <laughs> Don't drop it. There's an issue with the address. What's wrong with it? Did I spell it wrong? Your father has moved. Oh, no. Where? <laughs> he lives in a P.O. box. It's cozy. I don't know what that is. Is it like a house? Not really. So why does he live there? I don't know. It does seem weird, doesn't it? Niha doesn't break eye contact as she nods. She's on to you. But where do we send the letter? Just send it to the P.O. box. Are you sure, sir? She resigns herself to the idea and eventually it's <laughs> defeated. Okay. Can you write the new address on the letter? Of course, Niha. Do you have a pen? Miha hands you a pen through the window, and as you take care to make sure the address is correct and legible. When you're done, she looks at both you and the letter expectantly. Oh boy. Don't worry, I'll make sure it gets to your dad. She nods. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I couldn't lie to her! I'm sorry! You return to Dev, handing him the edited letter. There's a tinge of optimism in his face as he receives it. How'd she take it? Fine, all things considered, she misses you. I miss her too, a lot. Hey, thanks for doing this. I know it feels strange or maybe wrong, but I really think this is was the best option. So yeah, thank you. Be better for her. He says nothing for what feels like a minute. I will, I promise. Damn! <laughs> oh boy, well that was fun. Okay. I don't know what this goes to. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's me talking to me. Okay. What do you want? Take it easy. I'm just here to debrief. Anyway, maybe we can learn something from this. I don't really feel inspired. Learn something as, as in turn this into a stand-up bit. I don't feel right getting something out of this. Listen, like it or not, there's a joke here somewhere, but that doesn't mean you have to tell it. We're not going to drop the fact that I just lied to a child, are we? I, I think I did fine. I think I did as I think I did as much honesty as I possibly could. The large truck has set one of its hind legs, well, wheels, on the sidewalk in a half-assed attempt at backing up from the truck just down the hey, street. Hey, you. Got a sec? Can you help me out? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. What do you need? See that guy? That asshat over there has been sitting on his ramp doing nothing but scrolling on his phone. I need him to move. I've got a cargo to haul. Of butt. You want me to make him? You want me to make him move? Me? What? Why couldn't I ask you? Because I am an idiot, sir. Idiot's no better than idiot. <laughs> Idiot's better than no idiot in this case. Look, maybe he'll move it out of pity. Who knows? The guy won't listen to me. It's not like I can leave my truck long enough to convince him either. Oh, God. What's in it for me? He groans, looking around as if <laughs> literally searching for something in return. <laughs> Eventually, his eyes settle on his truck. Fuck, you like butter? Uh, butter's great. Look, I'll, just, I'll give you some butter. Just do it, alright? Yes, butter is perfection. He rubs his eyes. Whatever. Sure, I'll help you out. Great, get to it. This shipment's already late. I don't care how you do it, just make him move. I need to get back on the road. So, how come you're hauling butter? I don't know. I don't care. I just haul. Do you like butter? Are you a fan? But it's butter. I have no strong opinions about butter. It's a thing that exists. There. That's it. A wave of dread washes over him as he realizes you might be setting up an opportunity for yourself to talk about butter. Let me tell you how I feel about butter. Feel free not to. 
Oh boy. Butter is an amazing <laughs> butter is an amazing additive to your morning coffee. N no? Figure it out, bud. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. It helps jumpstart your morning, giving you a long lasting energy for your hard day of work. <laughs> Are you done? No. He looks like he's about to kill you. Oh, God. All right, I'm done. <laughs> good. Oh, boy, I should get going. Finally, a good idea. Now get to work on letting me do the same. Jeez. Oh, God. You can spy a few boxes left in the truck behind the eel sitting on the loading ramp. Mostly groceries oh, by the hey. look of it. Martin sent you. Tell him I'm still on a break. He'll get it. Ah, uh, can we talk about your truck for a How second? About it. Could you move it? No. I'm on break. I'll move it later when I'm off break. Couldn't, couldn't you just back it up a little or drive down the road a little? I definitely could. When I'm not on break, I'd be happy to then. Just relax, dude. I'll move it later. Uh, let's talk about this break of yours. I've got some questions. Questions about my break? Sure, shoot. How's it going? The break? Pretty well. Never mind. How long have you been on the break? He looks at the time. Half? Half the break? And how long is that? If you double it, it's a full break. Let's talk about something else. Oh, okay. I have nothing to say. Enjoy your It'll break. Do. Oh my god. Okay. Hang on, let's look at the duffel bag. It's full of posting supplies, such as posters. The adhesive covering the poster has lost some of its sheen, but it still glistens in the sun. The roller rumbles gently up and down, produces a comforting sound. The guy seems lost in thought, staring both poster and wall. Oh, staring through both poster and wall. Late night with Ringo, huh? Yep, you a fan? Never heard of the guy. He brightens up a little bit as if pleasantly surprised. Oh yeah? Good on you. He's a pretty big deal, I think. This guy? I say pass. Late night TV is crap. <laughs> Detection. Above average and a little bit revolutionary, apparently. Because of the mass market appeal, the cog in the media machinery? <laughs> he gives you a knowing look. Exactly. Feeds the celebrity culture, bread and circuses, keeps the little man focused on what their favorite actors and artists are doing. Remember a few years ago when King was mayor? He shakes his head. That's what happens. Corruption. Hmm. You're right. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Don't have to be mad. You just have to be aware. But if you want to fight the power, you have to be aware of what the power is and who controls it. Late night talk show hosts? They're just the figureheads. Media, that's who has the power. Millionaires, billionaires with networks lobbying and protecting the interests of the rich. He stops and sighs. Ugh, all right, I'm just getting riled up now. I don't know, what do you think about late night TV? I don't watch it, that's it. That's for the best. Wish more people were like you then. Kind of ruins comedy too, makes it marketable for the masses. Turns into chasing demographic. Turns into polarization, preaching to the choir. I think it's called Clapter. Jokes you laugh at because you agree with them. Anyway, I'm a rambling. Did you need something? You almost done with that? Oh, I was done about 45 minutes ago. But you're still rolling. Oh, yeah, I just don't like this guy. So does this count as rolling in your spare time or overtime rolling? I get paid per inch, not per hour. This is definitely spare time rolling. That doesn't sound fair. It's probably because it isn't. So why not find a new job? Nah, no one would hire someone my age with my skills that I'm stuck. What are your skills? None. <laughs> You're clearly a veteran in your current field. Maybe start your own company? He turns <laughs> for a moment. Field, dude, I put up posters. He goes back to rolling, but something has changed in his demeanor. What you suggested seems to have stuck with it. All right, I'm off about this for now. You know anything about this new store opening? No more than anyone else, I think. Looks like electronics, if I had to guess. I did see the owner earlier today over here, overheard her saying they'd open tomorrow. You're providing a great service, goodbye. <laughs> okay. And I can oh, I can look in that one. Based on the size and the amount of tiny boxes you can see inside, it's safe to say that this is an electronics store. Alright. 
Let's go see if we can convince Martin to... Oh! For some reason, I thought Martin was going to be on the left side of the window. You've been here before, and you know Martin. You know him from way back, even. He's been in retail for ages, and he's never been particularly stoked about it. He was the rope salesman in Clam Man 1. Marlon Clerk exerts a feigned smile from behind the counter. Welcome to Snacky Mart. We sell stuff. Oh, hey, man. What's up? His expression relaxes, and he goes back to alternating between daydreaming and tapping on his phone. Slow day, huh? He groans, rubbing his temples. I'm losing it. I need to get back out. <laughs> or I need to get out. I'd even take my old job back. For a moment, he looks like he's about to say something, but he stops himself and shrugs. You used to sell knots, didn't you? Yep, ropes and knots. Man, I can't believe I'm looking back on that fondly. You ever feel stuck like you're not getting anywhere? All the time. You're still at the mayonnaise company, huh? I'm actually getting into stand-up comedy. Ah, getting to laugh with you instead, huh? Did that back at the rope and knot shop. I used to joke about it. I'd say, we can't all be winners when I told people I worked in a rope and knot shop. Staying positive is healthy, dude. There are better ways of staying positive. I mean, if you're in a bad situation and try to get out, you're doing yourself no favors by trying to stay positive. It's... He stops for a second and looks down. Sometimes you shouldn't be positive. Like, stop bullshitting yourself. So did you? <laughs> Martin's quiet for a moment and he stares over your shoulder. Eventually he looks at you again. Yeah. He doesn't look like he wants to talk about it anymore. I want to buy something. He gives you a blank stare. Usually people grab things and bring them up here to pay, but not you, man. What do you need? <laughs> but you do you, man. What do you need? What do you have? Palpable confusion. E everything you see in here, I guess. Do you ask that a lot? What, what do people respond with? I've been making a fool of myself for years. Everyone hates me. You just said that out loud. Do you realize that? Yeah, I meant to. <laughs> of course you did, champ. Martin's nodding thoughtfully. Yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. I'll let you get back to work. Oh, God. The usual essentials. Soups, canned foods, and post-apocalyptic survival kits. Oh, God. Assorted snacks and assorted packs. The store's, also called, the store's called Snacky Mart, after all. You remember the feeling of biting down on a gumball as a child and wondering if it would crack before your teeth did? Wow. Mostly travel magazines, the few about hobby train sets. Go to space, it's nice. Ah, this is where the cheapest possible takeaway coffee is made. You're standing on sacred coarsely ground. <laughs> Delicious time, gift cards for frozen goods, 50% off, awesome. Yeah, okay, we can't talk about the bones. That's fine. Window's pretty frosted. It's hard to see inside. Is there something in there? Probably a lot of frozen food. See what's inside. Are you kidding me? Really is too frosty. Probably shelves and a backside. Maybe some stuff. Do you have a permit to store all this stuff? Do you have a permit to ask for permits? Holy shit, I'm talking to the fridge. That's what I thought. Oh god, open the door. Locked or frozen. Either way, it's not budging. How convenient! <laughs> okay, let's try again. Okay. Oh god, stay classy, fridge. See ya. Keep it cool. Alright, that's fine. You could withdraw money here if you had any. Alright. I gotta figure out what to do about the truck. I, I thought Martin would help me. Okay, so maybe I need to go back to truck driver. Maybe I can convince him to kill the guy on the ramp. Oh, okay, it's still there. Weren't you gonna do something about it? About moving the truck. Get rid of it. Push it. Make the guy move it. Anything that lets me get out of here. Hmm. I talked to him. He says he's on a break. Oh, okay. If he's on break, I should probably try and convince him it's over. Shit, if you think that'll work, then why not? Just make sure to hurry up, alright? Time's working against me here. Use time against him, eh? You say that in a really weird way, but I honestly could not care less, so eh. 
Okay. Oh god, is this where we is this where we use our tall our t knowledge of whether time is linear or not? Hang on. The delivery guy keeps scrolling through the content on his phone, momentarily looking up and giving you a salutary nod. Can we talk Slow about down. your truck for a second? Okay. I'm uh, using time against you somehow. Okay. Okay, we're gonna need some heavier ammunition than that. Let's find someone smart and ask them. Okay, so does that mean I need to go back to... Well. Okay, so do I... Maybe need. Maybe I need to go back to the alley. Okay, can you tell me about time again and how it pertains to brakes? Brakes? I mean, sure, but what for? I just need to prove that a break currently in progress is over. Someone's taking too long a break, are they? He thinks it over for a second and then muses on. Well, a break is, per definition, a moment, only a fraction of the main activity where one abstains from whatever one was doing. So I suppose a break is an instance of time, a sequence of moments. Come on, give me the good science juice. Unless we consider that a break is a break in time, which I don't think applies to the kind of break you're talking about. Time can't have a beginning nor an end. It implies a time before and after time, which is a paradox. So I guess you could argue that there can be no breaks in time. Again, this is about the cessation of a concept or a break of a cessation in time itself, not work hours. Sure. I have a feeling you're misunderstanding me or choosing to misinterpret me. No, I'm not. Wink. He just kind of stares at you for a moment, followed by a resigned, okay. There it is, Chief. We've armed ourselves with the science we need. Breaks don't exist. Now back to the delivery, guys, so you can prove that breaks metaphysically cannot exist. Cool. All right, can what we talk about it? Okay. Let's talk about this break of yours. Do you know that time doesn't actually exist? Oh, did you know that breaks don't actually exist? B breaks don't exist? What exactly does that mean? You sound like my boss. Ha 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 ha! Basically, you can't stop time. I'm aware of that. Time goes on during the break. He goes back to scrolling but freezes. Wait, you mean I'm wasting time? Yes? He looks to his side, up the street. That trucker guy sent you, didn't he? He did. Figured he'd try something like that. He wants me to move the truck, right? Certainly been screaming about it for a while. He's a dick. Isn't he a dick? I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to move trucks, but yes. Ugh. Fair enough. Tell him I'll move the truck. Not until he's ready to go, though. I'm not wasting any time waiting for the, waiting on the truck for this guy. Got it. Thank you for cooperation. Sure. All right. His break is over. He should move the truck any second now. Wait, really? He listened to you? What did you tell him? Just what I had to. Fucking fantastic. Was... Oh, were, were his delivery not so completely bone dry? You might mistake his response for genuine gratitude. You know what? Whatever. Thanks. I'm gonna head out. Godspeed, butter. No, wait. What about the butter? What about it? Can I have some? He thinks for a moment, splitting his attention between the other truck and the street behind him. No. He doesn't wait for a response, instead climbs onto the driver's seat of the truck. The truck starts up simultaneously with the blue one in front. The trucks start up simultaneously with the blue one in front moving slowly in on the street, giving just enough space for the trucker who speeds by. As soon as he's passed, the blue truck backs right up again, the delivery guy resuming both his brake and his blocking of the street. Motherfucker stole my butter. Look at that, no more butter truck. That guy was a dick. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be, yeah. Anyway, let's see what we can do with this. You did dabble with some serious subjects back there. Maybe you can get something scientific and clever out of it. I got number 11, Scientist Glam. Great. Ooh, another alley. <laughs> this alley looks really trashy, just like you. Wow, asshole. All right, we gotta go looking for at least a third joke. Oh, okay. Okay, is there something in there? Probably a lot of frozen food. I mean, something that shouldn't be there. Anything can and should be in the fridge, dude. You don't get to decide that. What? Obviously certain things don't belong in the fridge. And I'm sure you're going to tell me about them. You bet I am. Hit me. Yay! People. People shouldn't be in fridges. Being fridged is bad. It's bad storytelling, too. Oh, my God. P 
people. People shouldn't be in the fridge. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. There's, there's, there's a people in the fridge, isn't there? It's person. So there's a person in the fridge. <laughs> Cold enough for you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a comedian, you see. I can see you. Oh, wow, that's cool. It's almost like there was just a sheet of glass between us. He turns back to his work, whatever that is. I'm Luther. Can I help you with something? I, I don't know what to do. I have things on a list that I need to do, when I d and I don't know what to do. What do I do? <laughs> okay. No, be honest. Did Martin trap you in the fridge? What? No. If anything, I had to convince Martin to let me stay in here during the night. But why? I I'm a journalist. I do journalism. I report the news mostly. Well I, well, I say news, but oftentimes it's just filler. No, I don't mind admitting that. Filler makes the world go round. I'm sure you agree. <laughs> say nothing. Fuck rhymes. <laughs> oh, God. Improv. What the fuck? Filler makes the world... Oh, okay, sorry. I should have read them top to bottom. Filler makes the world iller. Filler makes the world chiller. If the filler's killer, it's certainly the thriller, but not otherwise certainly not. Okay, uh... God. I don't have high improv, so I'm gonna say... Say nothing. Fuck rhymes. Luther looks at you for a few seconds, expecting a response. Eventually, he returns back to his work. So, was there something you needed, or can I get back to work here? Uh, how's life in the fridge? Chill, motherfucker. A journalist, you say? I might have a scoop for you. If I had a cent for every time somebody told me that, but sure, go ahead. What's the story? There's a new club in town, opened by no one in particular. For the first time, Luther's typing stops and his gaze, and his gaze becomes more attentive. That actually does sound like news. He looks down at the time and back up at you. I have five minutes right now. Quick interview. You and me. Okay, sure, let's do it. Great. Luther pulls out a small portable recorder and presses it up against the glass door. <laughs> First of all, what's your name? Clam Man. No, what's your real name? No, it's actually Clam Man. Oh, I'm sorry. So, Mr. Man, what do you do? Oh, God, what do I do? <laughs> all right, take it easy. We can figure this out. No need to panic. Uh... <laughs> I should very much like to panic, thank you kindly. Nuh-uh, not allowed. We can deal with this. Okay, fine, but how? <laughs> well, let's backtrack. What was the last thing you did today? Worry about death? Worry about your own death or death in general? Me? I might die any second. That's technically true. Maybe just tell him that. D did you hear me? I'm not sure how well my voice carries through the door. I asked, what do you do? <laughs> I'm a comedian. Really? All right, if you say so. I suppose that makes sense, considering what you're plugging. So, a comedy club. Why? Hmm. Snacky Bay doesn't have a comedy club. Supply and demand. Oh, this is just for profit. Very much in line with modern comedy, isn't it? And are you the owner of this club? Oh, no, it's run by a group of comedians. Run by the community. Not worried this might end up being an exclusive ordeal? Hmm... I think the shows and performers will vary. There's going to be something for everyone. Hmm. Compromise Club might be a good title. Alright, that's about it. Anything you want to add? Hmm. God. I like three for what I'm trying to do, but it seems beggy. It's called The Poseidon, by the way. I should have said that earlier. Don't worry, most of our readers won't really care, and all those who do will look it up online. You got a website, right? I have no idea. That bodes well, doesn't it? Luther hits the keys one final time and looks back up at you. Alright, I'll run this past my editor and it'll be up either tonight or tomorrow. You wrote the whole thing already? It's not a two-page spread, man. It's a notice about an opening. I could literally write this with my eyes closed. Oh, okay, thanks. Yep, now if you don't mind, I got some work I need to get back to. Luther reclines back into the fridge, his face, li his face dimly lit by the blue screen of his laptop. But why is he in a fridge? Does it matter? Come on, let's go. Okay! Oh, hey, man. Okay. You're cool with Luther hanging out in the fridge? He's not bothering anyone, and if he's in there, I have an excuse not to stack and stock that particular fridge. It's a win-win for everyone. Uh, okay. Bye.
Okay, so I should let the triad know. I only have two jokes. Urgh. Oh, there's another button. Linda's bouncing with joy in short intervals. She might as well be vibrating. Close to her chest, she clutches a notepad tight enough to crease the Over cardboard here. cover. Hey, 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 hey! Listen, I've got it. I've got the single greatest realist theory ever. All right. Safe to say you've never seen her this excited for anything ever before. Start vibrating. Should I be seated for this? She ponders her question very seriously, her eyes darting around the room to find a chair capable of receiving the blow of infinite realness. Might be a good idea. No, no, it can't wait. But on seat or not, you need to hear this straight away. I'm glad you're not overselling it. Could have ruined the wow factor. She leans in, beaming. I promise you, this is better than anything you've ever heard or ever will hear. This is the realest your life is ever going to get. Think of how depressing that might be. It's depressing, all right. It's all downhill from here. Well, I say downhill. You're you're more of a pile. All right, let's hear it. An elated screech barely makes its way through her clenched teeth. She's trying to keep her cool, but the vibrations have now reached a frequency where her hair is starting to curl. If she could actually physically explode, this would be okay, the moment. Okay. So. She closes her eyes, retaining composure, and opens them up and looks at you with the conviction of a globally renowned scientist who's evidently completely, totally convinced you know about something. Everyone is really awkward. It's not just me. It is mostly you. You're the most awkward. Her eyes widen. It's everyone. It's a global epidemic or pandemic. I'm not sure which. All I know is that the symptoms are the same no matter where you go. Everyone's awkward. The only reason people pretend to be not to pretend to not be is because they're extra awkward, or that they're a one on the scale. The no scale? No one has ever quantified awkwardness. No one has ever created a scale for being socially inept. Until now, I present to you. Patiently await the realest theory of all time. Metro exit scale. What? She's hearing applause and elation, a deafening symphony of cheer and rejoice. This is her peaking. It's she'd probably like it if you sounded as excited as her. Hmm. Yes! Why not the subway slip system? Get some alliteration in there. Slightly surprised, Linda considers your suggestion. That's not bad, actually. Let's put a pin in that. All right, all right, let me give you the details. Basically, there are five levels on the scale. One to five. Zero doesn't count because no one's zero awkward. These five levels are determined by how any subject will act in a certain situation, which I'll get into in a second. First, I'm going to give you some parameters. A metro station has two exits called A and B. In this evaluation, the subject's preferred exit is exit A, since it's closer to where they're going. Exit A and B are on opposite ends of the platform. Do you follow so far? I think so. The station has two exits. You want to exit A, exit B is on the other end of the platform. Great. She adjusts her stance as if to seem more scientific and knowledgeable. Now, to place someone on the scale, we have to imagine a situation. Picture this. You get off at the station. You manage to cover a little bit of distance in one direction, believing you're heading for exit A, when suddenly you realize you're going the wrong way. What do you do? <laughs> oh, God. No biggie. Oh, man, that's embarrassing. Break into a cold sweat, just keep going, and then say nothing but explode with anxiety on the inside. This is too awful to imagine. Y you okay there? I mean, you don't have to answer if you don't really want to. It's up to you, but basically the subject picks whichever they think they would do in that situation. And there you go. We've successfully quantified awkwardness in a way that everyone can understand. Hmm. Great, now about the name, isn't the subway slip system a little bit sharper? Listen, it's just a tiny theory right now. If I can turn it into a big theory, then we can start getting picky with the names. All right, so what are you planning to do with the scale? I have to prove it. That's how science works. You can have all the theories you want, but they're not worth a thing unless you can reproduce them, prove them. And how are you gonna do that? I'm uh, not gonna do anything, probably. She seems pensive overlooking her notes. It's just for fun. This isn't an actual scientific need for the MMES. I honestly don't have the time to do any of that field research. It doesn't matter anyway. What level are you on the scale, Linda? What level am I? <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't been to the Metro in a really long time, to be honest. The whole theory is based on Metro behavior. I figured you'd have spent a lot of time there. Oh, right. No, I just hear a lot about it. A lot of people post stuff about their insecurities and anxieties online, and I've sort of formed the theory around that. It's all based on my personal experience, just not my personal experience. 
Oh, man. Fine, I really wanted to get that one. I did too. Here's an idea, do it all online. Polls, surveys, easy. I could, I guess? Mm, take a lot of time though, and I'm not sure the scientific community would accept the results, but I guess I could try. That's gonna take a while. You should help too, speed things up or not. It's up to you. Oh, this is me talking to me. That way you don't have to promise anything. Hey, if you can handle all the paperwork and stuff, I can take care of the field research. You know what? Earlier when I told you she was excited and happy, it pales in comparison to what's happening now. Are you serious? Really? I'd love that. Let's do this. So what exactly do you need? I need data, I suppose. There's determination and pragmatism in her voice, and she continues. We don't have the time or resources to test this on a thousand people. I think the best course of action is to find a true level 1 and a true level 5. Or 6, I guess. We document their responses and use that data to gain more traction. But I don't think we can use ourselves for the study. It doesn't seem very scientific. Then, with more traction, we have the attention and potential funding to actually pursue the theory in a greater scope. Great, I'll find someone not awkward at all and someone who's incredibly awkward, interview them, and bring the data back to you. Okay. So I need Nat and Olev, I think. Hey, Olev, can I ask you a question about the Metro? Immediate nervous sweats, eyes wide, and goosebumps. The Metro? Jackpot. Imagine you're getting off the Metro, start walking towards the wrong edge. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Imagine you're on the Metro. <laughs> That's why I didn't even more. Please, no. You get off the train and start heading the wrong way. Olev stares forward as if in a catatonic state. The only movement you see on his body are the drops of sweat running down his forehead and neck. Olev, you okay? Large bags form under his eyes. The sweat flows like a river. His arms and legs are shaking. He straightens his posture as if someone or something was pushing into his back. His jaw slowly drops, slight humming <laughs> from his lungs. What the actual fuck is going on? A dim glow is in his eyes. The light increases slowly until his pupils emit blinding beams of light. The earth starts shaking, a shake of an earthquake slithering ever closer. Olaf starts vibrating and the sidewalk underneath him growls and crumbles. It's too awkward, we need to abort now. Are you kidding me? I need to see where this is going. His body begins to vibrate and convulse, and you can make out some words from the loud roaring noise of emanating from the tiny starfish. That's too awkward. A seahorse girl gives him and Nat a terrified look, or gives you and Nat a terrified look, but then turns to the eldritch starfish teen. Olaf, shut the fuck up, you're making a scene. <laughs> the thundering cacophony shakes the entire street. What do you mean? You're making a scene. People are staring. As if hit by lightning, Olive freezes. <laughs> Everything comes to a halt. The world returns to normal. The little starfish dude looks no worse for wear apart from the bags beneath his eyes and the hoodie now soaked in sweat. He clears his throat for a mousy whisper. Are, are they still looking? Yeah, they are. <laughs> Lisa sna Lena snaps at you. Dude, what the hell? Turning to Olive, she continues. No, Olive, you're fine. No one's looking at you. No one cares. Oh, that's good. That's a lot better. Nat backs up from Olev and looks at you for answers. What just happened? <laughs> oh, God. He's a level 5 MME. I don't know what that means, and I'm not sure I want to. It's science. Science I don't need. Can we drop this? Olev nods. He'd like to forget about all of this, if you don't mind. That's level 5. We should let Linda know. Got it. Okay, so... A level zero on the awkward scale. I feel like that's Martin, maybe? Since it wasn't Nat. Okay, so no one Martin. Thanks for moving the truck. No problem, dude. What are you looking at? Just a sub I follow, mostly shit posting, but you know the good kind. It's the good kind. Inside joke memes, general talk about the community, evil act, that kind of thing. Evil act. Very, very specific inside joke. Look it up, you're gonna love it. Explain the joke, I need jokes. Uh, it's kind of strange, it doesn't make much sense if you try to explain it. That's how memes work, dude. It's a joke you have to be in on. He lights up as if struck by inspiration. You know when you're hanging out with someone and something really funny happens and then if you try to tell that story to someone who wasn't there, it just doesn't work? Literally has never happened to me. Guess you have to have friends to hang out with for that to work. Uh, yeah, anyway. It's like that. Online communities like 
that have inside jokes. It's not funny unless you're among the people who decide it's funny with. It's kind of a thing. That sounds incredibly arbitrary. He looks back at his phone but stops scrolling. It kind of does, doesn't it? Whatever, the more you laugh the better, right? It's not like we're laughing at someone's expense or trolling or bullying. It's just having a good time. Super best friends, that kind of thing. Sounds super beast. He nods, you get it. Cool, anyway, I want to ask you other things, important things. Okay, so it's not the delivery guy either. Okay, nothing new there. Dev snuck off. Oh, okay. Mia's attention is with the wind, as if waiting for a response or listening for an answer. You can't hear the TV in the apartment anymore. When she notices you, she snaps out of it, bouncing up with a smile. Hello, Mr. Clam. I'm on the lookout for the postman and Dad's letter. It might take a couple of letters. It might take a couple of days to get the letter, Niha. She gives you an upset look and presses her face against the windowsill. I can't wait that long. Why not do something else while you wait? No. She looks very serious. Someone has to keep an eye out. Something might happen to the postman. She puts her hand up to block the sun as if she were a lookout. How's it going, Niha? I'm waiting. I hope Dad writes it back as soon as possible. Be patient, Niha. No! She hides her face in her hands. Okay. So maybe the, maybe the next person is in the apartments, because I didn't look through there either. Okay, let's try Tilda. How's it going? I don't do small talk. What do you want? Need help with anything? Not from you. <laughs> Looks like we'll be working together. Shock and devastation. She was dreading this. What do you mean? I'll be helping out with the club. With what? I'm going to do stand-up. You? She's... She starts laughing, louder and louder by the second. Soon tears are streaming down her face, contorted by uncontrollable laughter. After a while, she calms down and starts working again. She's holding back laughter, saying, Sure, of course you are. You'll be great. I'm getting the word out. I can't imagine who would listen to you willingly. But as long as you don't hang out around the bar, I'm fine with that. Sure. I'll let you get back to work. Dang. Okay. Is Pete here? Pete might be a one. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, Mac, yay! Can I ask you a question about the Metro? Why would you ask me a question about the Metro? It's for science. He's not telling you off, though. Maybe he's curious. Imagine you're at the Metro. When you get off, you're heading the wrong way. Why? Just imagine. Pointless, but fine. You realize your mistake. What do you do? I turn around. Oh, okay. Yeah, is that it? How exactly do you just turn around, if you don't mind me asking? He groans. I turn my shoulders and then my body until I face the other way. Then I start walking. What if people are watching? I don't give a shit. How? People are idiots. Why should I care what idiots think or look at? Am I an idiot? He doesn't mean you specifically, but yeah, you're probably included in the general people he's referring to. Now let me get back to work. Nice. Hey, how's the field research going? About my progress. I found a level five or six, maybe. What? Really? Holy crap. She looks like she looks like it's too good to be true. How? Where? Who? It's this nervous kid outside, Nat's friend. You know, I sort of suspected we'd find a kid <laughs> at that level. I'll investigate further. I gotta admit, I didn't think we'd find a level five. That's impressive. You're so close. Keep at it. Let me know when you find a level one. That should be way easier. I found a level one. You did? That's amazing. Who is it? His name's Mac. He works at a cafe. Yeah, I suppose it would take a certain kind of person to work in that industry. No matter, that's perfect. I'll uh, send him an email, I guess, if needed. She goes down the list. That's all we needed. For however fleeting a moment, she's speechless. We actually did it. She goes on, brimming with glee. With the data you gathered, we can kickstart some serious research. Psychologists, anthropologists, universities. Imagine what they could do with MMEs. She looks genuinely, deeply grateful, giving off an air of relief and adoration. Seriously, I don't think you realize how much this means to me. D does she like me? Man, it's hard to say. It's like she's radiating warmth. You know that feeling when you're so hopelessly pleased that it feels like your heart melts? She's feeling that. You could just revel in her happiness, you know? It doesn't have to be about you liking her or her liking you. Sometimes people can just be grateful and like each other in a general sense. No, I'm, 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 I get that. I'm just saying, does she like me? It's possible. 
<laughs> I have no strong feelings about this. Good for you. Oh, God. Oh, happy I could help. The whole research has been really eye interesting. Eye-opening, really. She smiled. It's a nice, warm smile, and it makes you feel good. It really has. Uh, so, what's next? Next up is writing an essay, I guess, or an article. Or some kind of academic thesis thing, I suppose. Or just gather and summarize all the data we have and... Okay, never mind. Gather all the research we have so far. She reassures you, saying, I'll get started as soon as possible. After that, it's up to the response and scientific community. Hopefully it'll be easy to get funding for more research. Uh, we should hang out more. Her eyes widen a little and she nods an awkward nod. Sure, do you have a PC? We can play some Civitas online if you want. If I ever get a PC, then sure thing. Sounds good. Let me know when you do and you can add me. She smiles, then returns to scribbling things in her notes. <laughs> About the scale. Uh, I think you could do a lot of good with it. She looks over her notes, contemplating them. I think so. I hope so. Hey, thanks again. You've been a huge help. This was stand-up fodder to begin with. Radical. Whatever. Here, have a setup. <laughs> you got seven. The MMEs. Okay. Ooh, yes. Danger, danger. High voltage. <laughs> There's more, but the rest has been scrubbed out. Oh. Not in the mood to set up bed or go to sleep right now. Okay. Plant's been neglected. Suddenly if- Whoa. What? Suddenly a few of them shift and move and the plant speaks up with a gruff voice. Yeah, what? What are you so upset about? Oh, I wonder. I wonder why I'm so upset. Are you hungry? I know that's why I get cranky. Of course I'm cranky. I'm stuck here in this godforsaken pot in this godforsaken apartment. Sounds like cranky talk to me. I'll get you something to eat. Hurry, I'm starving here. <laughs> About that food. You know what? Never mind. Okay, you're a plant by. Okay. We've got bills. Looking at the bill fills you with an existential dread. Maybe a career change wasn't the best move right now. Dishes. Okay, I'm looking for... Something. Clock. It's a nice clock, just a shame it doesn't work. You should give it a hand sometime. <laughs> okay, nothing in the cabinet, so I guess we gotta check the fridge. You swing the door open, the light clicks, and the contents of the fridge is illuminated... Oh, and the content of the fridge is illuminated by what seems like a spotlight. There's food in here. Alright, what would a houseplant want to eat? A houseplant does nothing all day, every day. It just sits there contributing nothing. You'd think with that logic, it would know not to ask for much. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. The fridge isn't responding, doesn't even flinch. It's not taking it's not talking about the actual house plant it meant you. It's saying you're a house plant. Your fridge hates you. What are you offering, fridge? Uh Tomatoes, milk, bread, and cold cuts. Just a bunch of empty jars and packages. Milk is the closest thing to water. You reach out to the milk, but your hand is stopped by a halberd with a white flag tat. We want no part of this. Be on your way. What the heck is going on in this fridge? Listen, the speaker's a glass bottle of 2% milk. We're not done, exp or we're done explaining ourselves. We're not meddling in the affairs of the fridge anymore. We're neutral now. The 2% crosses its arms and that's that. All right, I'm gonna need more details. We're the democracy of dairy. There are many factions in the fridge and for long we've managed the union and coexistence of the fridge. This because we happen to be placed on the door shelves is the gate to the outside. An old dry wedge of Parmesan pipes up. We're, the, we're done with all that now. Bunch of children, crybabies, pathetic. The 2% clears its throat and explains. The factions of the fridge are constantly bickering. There's no use trying to meditate, mediate a peace if there's no will for it. So we've declared ourselves neutral. We refuse to take any part in it. And now the other factions have finally agreed to an assembly and expect us to just come happily mediate. The nerve, I tell you. Well, they can all saw it off. We're staying out of it. Convince the dairy to participate in the meeting. God damn it. Come on, you're so milky and creamy. Please, please, please. Doesn't matter how many, doesn't matter how many e's you can fit into a single please. We are neutral. We're staying out of this. The war is the other shell's problem, not ours. Also, you're weird, and I think I like you even less now. In the eyes of the milk, you just went bad. That was some weird phrasing. Uh, I guess you have the right to do that. We have every right to do that. I don't care. Your hand closes on a small block of Emmentaler on your way out of the fridge. You hear muffled screams and mourning through the doors it closes. <laughs> All right, we got some cheese. Time to bring it back to the plant. Okay. Uh, 
Back again, are you? Here, have some cheese on me. Without a word, the plant reaches out its tendrils and snatches it from your hand. It's impressive. It's really, really disturbing. Huh, not too bad. You're not a complete idiot after all. Thanks, I guess. That's it? Wait, hold up. There might be something in here we can use. Something funny. For a joke? Exactly. There's a joke in here somewhere. About how I just argue with a bunch of food? Sure, that'd be absurd. Improv way of doing it. Why not? That might be weird. What are the other options I have? What about the fact that I'm intimidated by my own house plans? Sure, that sounds fun. Sounds like a self-awareness kind of joke. We're going with that? Perfect. That's what I'm specced for anyway. Okay. No need to knock. She's already in the stairwell. Okay, I think we are actually good. I'm going to head back to the club and see what's up. All right. Hey, how are things coming along? All right. Got the word out. Just came back from an interview. Wait, really? That was surprisingly quick. Who'd you talk to? Same as Luther. He's a journalist. Oh, Luther. Of course. Everyone knows Luther. Luther, Luther. So where does he work? Who does he write for? Uh, I'm not sure. He posts stuff on... <laughs> Edna stares at you and then over your left shoulder. She dances an expletive on the tip of her tongue for a few seconds and then looks back at you. Fine, but you better be sure about this. I'm about 50-50. Man, you just inspire hope, don't you? You love sass, Edna. Admit it. Sass my ass! Clayton cuts the two of them off. You know what? 50-50 is good enough for me. It's better than nothing. Great job, dude. Hopefully that'll give us the boost we need. Let's hope so. Either way, thanks. Al gives you a thumbs up and leans in. What about your routine? My what? Your jokes? The three jokes for your show? Oh. <laughs> Wait, did you think... What did you think we meant? You, you know what? Never mind. I got my set. I'm ready. Cool. We're just about done here, too. You guys haven't moved an inch. We did. We just take breaks. Responsible breaks. We're pretty much all set up. Spotlights up. PA system works. Bar stocked. Fingers crossed. We're going through our sets, workshopping jokes. What about you? How do you feel about your bits? They're awful. They're all awful. That's the spirit. <laughs> it's your first time. Don't worry too much. Just have fun with it. Listen, we'll help you out. It's not so long until the show, so let's go through some basics, all right? Clay, there's still some stuff to do. It's not like we can just sit back and do nothing till the show starts. After thinking things over, Edna declares one of us can go. She looks at Al and Clayton for approval. The other two can handle the rest. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. All right, who goes? I don't know who's who. I think I like Clayton the best just because he was the first one to say hi. Oh man, of course it's the least I can do. As he prepares to get up, he looks at his two colleagues. You guys will be fine, right? Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? We'll be fine, you guys go ahead. All right, man, let's go. I know each of them is for a specific discipline, but I don't know which one's which. The two of you make your way to the green room and go over your jokes. It takes a while, but eventually you manage to turn the jokes into actual bits. Go you. The opening draws near. You hear the rumbling of chairs and a sea of voices pour into the club. Guess people found the spot after all. Clayton stretches, letting out a groan followed by a deep exhale. He doesn't seem very Gross. nervous. Gross. Exciting, huh? Let's go over the basics again, shall we? There's a tint of authority in the way he says that, as if, as if he's not suggesting it, but rather commanding it. Uh... Okay. How do I tell jokes exactly? Just take a deep breath, look at the audience, and give them the best joke you've got. Or, failing that, just one thing, you, one you think they'll like the most. So, open your repertoire, click the joke you want, and drag it out to the audience. And how do I open the repertoire? Smiley lower left. Got it. You don't. Oh, you don't know what jokes to tell. Not really. You can always try to imagine who you want to amuse. General audiences are fairly easy. People who come to clubs like this want to laugh, which works in your favor. Critics and comedians are harder for similar reasons. Critics want to find flaws in your jokes, and a lot of comedians want to be inspired by them. But both of them have heard a lot of jokes. They're harder to get a laugh out of. So if you're not... So if you look over at, L, at me, Al, and Edna, don't worry if we're not roaring with laughter. He gives you a reassuring smile. So there's basically two types of audience member. Technically, there's one more. People you know. Now, me, Edna, and Al don't count. We're already in that other category. I mean people from outside. Friends, family, people who know you. 
When you come up on stage, you become a comedian, but if the audience knows you, you become just you. You're you, but telling jokes. And telling people or having them know you're going to try to be funny is a death blow to being funny. Really? I heard death blow and now I'm terrified. Not a literal death blow, I'm just saying that it makes it way harder for you to be funny. Why? Because telling jokes is all about expectations. It's managing and subverting expectations. If you tell someone you're funny, for example, their first reaction will be, Oh, really? Or say something funny. Oh, I get it. He taps his temples. Yeah, be careful with that. Anyway, just keep that in mind. Whoopsies. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Clayton takes a deep, thoughtful breath and stares at the ceiling as he lets it out in short pops. Good question. I guess we could go over some terminology you might need. Your pocket starts buzzing. A message. Clayton pats down his pocket. Was that yours? If it's not expecting something important, could you leave it for later? We don't have too much time. I don't have the dynamics. Sorry, Clay, you were saying? Right, terminology. Number one, bombing. Hate it. <laughs> you throw him off. Uh, right, yeah, I mean, most of us would. Bombing is when your jokes don't land, either because you mess them up, forget them, or the audience is against you, or just a tough crowd, or you just get unlucky. You don't want to bomb. I don't want to bomb. No one does, but you probably will. Not today if you're really lucky, but you will. We all do at some point. Start with sweating profusely. There's the, there's the, again. Sorry if that freaks you out, dude. It's just better to be ready for it. Okay, number two is killing it. That one's, that one's pretty straightforward. It's the opposite of bombing. Your jokes land and land really well. You get serious laughs. Your entire set can kill or just a single bit. Okay, don't bomb. Kill. <laughs> huh. Might be a joke in there. Anyway. Not sure what else you need to know right now. You usually just pick those terms up as you go. Actually, you know what? There's one heckler. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> All right, then. Just be careful with them, especially when you don't have much experience. They prey on your confidence or lack thereof. Hmm. <laughs> they have... They prey on low self-confidence? Oh, dinner is fucking served. See, that's a good joke, but hecklers are going to hear that and take it as an invitation. You need to be confident or at least give the impression to the audience. Have you ever gotten heckled? Sure, it doesn't happen often. My brand of comedy usually doesn't invite that, so it's mostly just assholes in my case. Comics like Edna get it differently. Angrier jokes. Maybe a little more controversial. Gets people more reactionary. And then, of course, she's not a dude. Drunk assholes are likely to point that out. Heckler's killing it. Bomb. Now I know. Sweet, you'll do fine, dude. I promise. It looks like the clock on the wall. Looks like it's showtime. You ready? I'm gonna get heckled to shit, aren't I? <laughs> I promise, dude, you'll be fine, but if you do get heckled, we'll deal with it. But I admit, it's mostly on you. Keep your cool. Try to have fun out there, and if you have fun, they have fun. Best of luck, my dude. And thanks for helping with everything. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Not excessively and violently. Alright, how do I check my phone? Can I check my phone? I haven't saved at all. Okay. Yeah, I didn't check my phone, so I don't know what it was about. I didn't have the aqua dynamics to do it anyway. Sounds and blurs of light pass by. The crowd is murmuring and chattering. From your position backstage, you see the microphone cradle in its holder atop the stand and the spotlight beaming down over it. The corrugated metal glistens like polished silver in the light, like a trophy or some long forgotten precious artifact now only to be discovered. It's a microphone. <laughs> of course it's a microphone. Doesn't mean you can't think of it as something more. All right, let's go. <laughs> My best friend is on stage. Okay. You're up. <laughs> oh God. Oh boy, that's a lot of people looking right at me. Oh God. <laughs> Please, yeah, let's do it. Okay, stay calm. They're here to listen to you. They want to hear from you. Keep your cool, tell your jokes, do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I was never cool. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Alright, so what do you want to do? Only real answers this time. Greet the audience, but keep it short. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Let's get the show started. Okay, yay, I'm doing right I'm doing right by my mentor. Okay, this is good. It's a minor cheer from the audience. They're clearly eager to start the show. Pete cheers loudly. You got it. Woo! Okay, definitely don't say, let's do it, Pete! 
Say nothing but give him a wink. Pete cheers and sits back down, eagerly awaiting your first joke. All right, Chief, what's the first joke gonna be? All right. So everything scares me. It's the one that goes best with my, with my stats. I'll admit it, I'm terrified of everything. Some heads are turned and some laughs are scoffed. Some seem to think they misheard you. The triad seems intrigued, however. It's an interesting, unexpected setup, and they're curious to see where you take it. Take it somewhere funny. <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't. It bugs me that I could have failed that, even with that being my good stat. Okay, we can work with this. Let's start with the most logical first result of those fears. I'm scared of everything, and that terrifies me. Not much in the way of laughter, but apart from a few scattered haws across the room, but you have their attention. <laughs> Al. Ha. I tried confronting myself about it. Naturally, I was scared shitless making all sorts of excuses and creating all these elaborate scapegoats. At the end, I was running away from myself, screaming. So I'm chasing me down the street and I'm just getting even more scared. Like, what if I catch me? What am I going to do to myself? Eventually, I was arrested for beating myself up. That's what a lot of crime is nowadays. <laughs> In most assault cases, the perp knows the victim. There's a 50-50 split of confusion and amusement in the room. Some love the absurdity of the joke, and the others are still piecing together your story. It's more of a success than a failure, however, that's for sure. The slow, weird, absurdist joke sits especially well with Edna, who for once grins without a trace of sarcasm. What? <laughs> okay. Good job making fun of yourself, Chief. This one seems to have worked well. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, man. Ah, oh, I wanted lying to children. I gotta do it. Oh, God. There's probably one joke for each of the four, <laughs> four stats. So, I lied to a child recently. Double takes from the audience. Did he say that? Why? Eyebrows are raised, even among the triad. Edna seems to be excited for this one, for where this one's going. Elaborate why lying to children is great. Yes! I'm gonna bomb on my last one though. I've used my two best stats. Children will believe anything you tell them. It's not harder than that. All that's left is figuring out how to use that power. Children will believe anything. Kids are, quite literally, tiny dumb versions of real people. And real people are pretty dumb to begin with. And the best part is that as a society, we kind of encourage it. Santa, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy. There's literally no reason for kids to... <laughs> believe in those things because kids are stupid remember a kid you told about santa is just as happy as a kid who's never heard of santa kids come up with stupid shit to be happy about all the time we're literally just setting them up for disappointment it's like a long sick plan to make kids feel bad it's like we're bitter about not being kids like fuck you timmy santa isn't real everything you know is a lie welcome to adulthood asshole We've been building laughter throughout the whole monologue, and people seem genuinely people people genuinely seem to like your take on lies and kids. Take that as you will. Al is loving it. I've got plus two to Al. Awesome. <laughs> the wordiness, the subject matter, the disguised joke. This is up his alley. Oh, uh, all right. You just got laughs about lying to kids. Go you. Oh, I got one more, and I'm gonna bomb it. God. I gotta take the MMEs. I don't know why, but I do. We need a scale for classifying awkward people. A few chuckles. Disappointingly, <laughs> none of them very awkward. The triad follows along. You've set the premise pretty clearly. Oh, this is gonna bomb. Yep. Now that you think about it, awkward people aren't funny. They're a public hazard. Wait, how are they a hazard? You just saw what Olive did. Imagine that kind of awkwardness on a weaponized scale. You're saying that the government is secretly militarizing awkward people in order to invade small countries, destabilize their economies, and appoint puppet governments led by those same awkward people? Can I switch jokes now? <laughs> sure. I knew it. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. So what are we going to tell the people in the audience? <laughs> I'm going to say nothing. I'm just going to stand here and drool. <laughs> Oh. I hate myself. The few people in the <laughs> the few people in the front row. 
<laughs> Watch as the dribble drips down from your mouth and onto the mic. It's really gross and one woman leaves. You can't blame her. This is a big bomb. Let's just keep going. Come on, I got one more. Oh no, I can't? God damn it. I wish I'd finished strong. That's it. That's your slot. Wrap it up. Uh, what already? I want to tell more jokes. Look, they told you three jokes was enough, so that's all we're doing. Besides, consider the fact that you're sharing the stage. Let the next performer go. Oh, God. Thank you, Snacky Bay. You've been a terrific audience. Some flaws and a few cheers. Nothing major, but appreciative. Pete gets up cheering. Yeah, you did it. That was awesome, man. Pete plus 107. A few people in the crowd around him laugh, but he doesn't care. He's just really happy for you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Pete doesn't say anything, but pumps his fist into the air in triumph. You make your way into the shadows backstage. Oh, God damn it! I mean, I, that was bound to happen based on my stats, but... Unless I've misunderstood the situation. Like, maybe I could have gotten all setups that went with self... Uh, Self-awareness. The triad. After you get off stage, the night seems to pass in a flash. Moments flow and fade into existence and memory. Pete congratulating you in his typical excitable way. The performances of the triad following your opening. Chuckles and laughter. Before you know it, the night's over. The club starts clearing out and Clayton ushers you outside along with Edna and Al. The quiet, cold evening in the alley behind the Poseidon is a welcome contrast to the noisy heat of the club's interior. You, along with your newfound peers, step out with the drinks in hand. Clayton takes a long swig from his glass and rests the entire weight against the railing. Inhale, exhale, and a smile on his face. After making his way down the stairs, Al plops down on the trunk of this alleyway mammoth and lifts his glass to toast the giant. Edna swings herself on top of the railing in one fell swoop, dangling and clanking her feet against the balusters as if controlling bursts of excess energy. The Poseidon survived its first night. Morale is good. A toast is made in a relaxed, muted manner. It's obvious that for some, a giant weight has been lifted. Some comments and feedback are shared, and eventually the eyes are on you well, and you're set. How does it feel? I don't feel anything. Don't drink to that. <laughs> okay, Edna. Ah, uh, give it time to set in. Let's see how you feel tomorrow. What about your set? How do you think it went? It went okay, I guess? You know what? You did pretty great. I counted one joke that didn't land. That's pretty impressive. For your first time, that's awesome. No joke. Ha! <laughs> okay, I guess I need to go with Al instead of Clayton, because I got plus two to Al. Yeah, hats off. Good job, dude. He lifts up his glass for a toast. Cheers are made and swigs of various beverages are taken. Morale and is good. for the record, I think you'll fit in great here. You seem like a good guy to me. Thanks, Clayton. I agree with Clayton. Glad to have you on board. I like your style, and I like your jokes. That's an A in my book. <laughs> Stoically nod like a cool Whatever. guy. I'm not all mush mush like these two softies. I've got my eye on you, Clammy. One wrong move, and I'm stealing your shoes and filling them with pudding. What about She's mayonnaise? half joking. But... She's just as happy to have you on board as me and Clay. <laughs> yes. Thanks for all your help. <laughs> Somehow the squinting intensifies. It's one of the squintier squints you've ever experienced. What's your favorite kind of pudding? <laughs> Chocolate. What's yours? More squint. Like, holy shit, that's absurdly squinty. I hate pudding. <laughs> Perfect. More toasts, more cheers, morale is good. Flashes of the horror lived in, <laughs> flashes of the horror lived on your first steps on stage are dimmed and muted by a newfound sense of belonging. A secret society, a ragtag gang of outlaws paving their own way. <laughs> All I did was tell jokes on stage. Calm down. So, dude, ready to do the same thing tomorrow? One tiny thing, though. Usually we work on sets for ages, years. Al draws circles in the air, rewriting, reworking. It usually takes a long time until you have a set you're happy with and that consistently lands. We want to do new material. Every single night. Whew. That's fine, I still have a few jokes. Good, you'll need them. And still more. We know it's not ideal, it's tough and it's gonna get tougher as we go. But we have faith in you. 
and tons of material for ourselves to use. She's messing with you, we're all going to do the same thing, but we really do have tons of material for ourselves to use. If you want to keep going, you've got a spot here at the Poseidon every night. Hell, if you want to take more part in running the club, that'd be great too. Promos, interviews, podcasts, maybe even talk shows. What do you say? Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm not gonna you son of a bitch, I'm in. One last cheer, morale is good. Why am I getting updates on the morale every time? Can I scroll back? I can scroll back. Okay, whoopsies. You listen as the last few guests leave the club, laughing and loudly hailing cabs. A siren wails somewhere in the city. A message from Pete buzzes in your pocket. That was so cool, dude. Had to leave because work tomorrow, but let's get some breakfast tomorrow morning, alright? Best friend breakfast, let's go! Guess you're a comedian now, huh? You feel prepared for your new life? <laughs> Dear God, no! <laughs> let's go! <laughs> oh my God. The end of day one. And I think the full game is supposed to take place over the course of a week. So this is going to be incredibly long. I'm excited about that though. I love this. Nice. Oh, that means I only get to do seven shows. Damn. Eh, I guess there's... No. Okay. I guess I should think of it differently. Hell yeah, I will. Oh, man. I thought there was going to be more music. Okay. Okay. That was the demo for Clam Man 2. It's, it might be on Steam by the time this comes out, but I'm going to leave a link to the Itch.io page in the description. Uh, try it out yourself. See if you can't get different outcomes and let me know what I could have done differently. But until the next video, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you around. Bye.